Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Well, I would like to start off by saying I did not review the previous Assassin's Creed Origins, although I found it one of the best entries after Black Flag. To be honest, Black Flag was still one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. It even compared well with Origins, which was actually the first step that deviated well away from the franchise's main core elements, which were stealth, follow and assassinate. Many loved it, many hated it. Origins was quite a long game and by the time I finished my Platinum Trophy, I had about 120 hours of gameplay footage and I did not know where to start if I wanted to review it. By that time, new games were out and I continued on with those, so I skipped the review completely and I'm sorry about that. In this video I will try to compare them and review them both, still keeping the main focus on Odyssey. So now, the year 2018, along came Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the release I was not at all waiting to be honest. It was quite a surprise to me that uh, this game managed to sneak past my radar. But still, two months after the release I already knew that it was going to happen, but you know, my past experiences with this franchise have always been the same. You get one good episode, or one good game, followed by two shitty, fast-paced development turds that they cook up with nine months. It happened after Black Flag, which was a masterpiece, I must add, and it was followed by Unity and Syndicate. They both made me puke out my eyeballs. In comparison, they were an utter clutter, giving you a shallow story and a small world. So after that we got Origins, which was in development over 4 years and yet duh, of course it was going to be good. And it was! Gloriously large map, fantastic, historically correct architecture and the cultural convention that this game convincingly persuaded was out of this world. It was phenomenal, accompanied by rich cities, vast deserts and beautiful landscapes. This game gave me a boner each time I started started to play. It introduced more RPG elements and weapon systems and overall skill trees. Oh my heaven god. <laughs> you had a bond with your owl and the main protagonist was memorable. Quests were done with love and you, you know always you could emphasize with characters. And as mentioned the map was beyond big and discovering it took a while. Trust me, it took a while. Bad parts were, you know, pointless DLCs and somewhat half-baked effort to lure gamers back with weird Anubis battles. I don't think that's enough. Please, please give me all the content at once and don't add your stupid DLCs with some, you know, shit. Give me DLCs that uh, extend your map or something. Thank you very much. But overall this game was fantastic. Naturally I figured that the next entry would make me puke again. So I dismissed it immediately. After all Red Dead is what I'm aiming for. But I still bought a copy for myself. A standard edition of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah a lot of those editions out there. Uh, so I stuck this game into my console. And wow. I'm, I'm blown away. Whatever Origins had, Odyssey has upgraded, polished, added upon and even amped up several levels. You now have full-blown RPG that is blended with Witcher 3, Shadow of War and, you know, best parts of Assassin's Creed. Why and how these games, I will come to it in a minute. You can choose your main protagonist, I always choose a female character in a game and uh, in a real life as well. And the story begins! I will not go into detail with the story, but let me tell you that this is one of the best ones in the franchise. All the cutscenes are interesting and you will never want to skip them. You will start caring about what happens and your decisions have actual consequences. You can now choose your path in the story by choosing your answers in the dialogue window or just acting upon choices given. I love that this game doesn't take itself too seriously and it actually has very funny moments and quests in it or just silly quotes that you will remember even after your story is complete. Many decisions will come to hunt you as the story progresses and it's totally, it's, it's absolutely fantastic, a game with consequences is my cup of tea. Graphically, this game is pristine, it's beautiful to look and explore, map is large and full of shit to do, it really is. By the way, this game encourages you to play with hard off and with no map markers, I mean it makes sense but you're completely blind to where everything is and where to go and where your quests are. 
but this will enhance your immersion most certainly. But map this size, I, I wouldn't torture myself, never ever with, with that. Many say that this game is more of an asset flip, since it uses a lot of textures and houses like in Origins. Well, so f***ing what? It's a wooden f***ing door, it should be a wooden f***ing door, why the fuck should we make a new one? Tree is a tree, as a grass is a grass. Houses match in this time period and in this culture perfectly. Actions take place between 431 to 404 PC and it's the furthest that the Assassin's Creed franchise has ever been. And you know what? I, I love it! Loading screen also has changed, as you can no longer run uh, around like an idiot as the game is loading. And it kinda makes sense, because you need to relax for a second after someone has kicked your ass and killed you. And by the way, it happens a lot! This brings me to the fighting mechanism. Well, it has been definitely approved. Uh, no more those stupid lock-ons, although it's optional. Uh, no more forced silent hits anymore. Uh, you can you can go in with guns blazing, well, swords, daggers, maces, bows and staffs to be exact. But if you find an enemy with the same level or lower than yours, you can actually have a fair chance to kill them, even when there's like five or six of them around you. But if the enemy is higher than your level is, you will struggle and you most likely will die even if your gear is upgraded. When taking on a harder enemy, you need to dodge, combine light and heavy attacks, smash your way through the shields and take the shields from them and then try to use every perk you have. You can add those perks to your fast use menu and use them like uh, with God of War like button combinations. Those can be upgraded as well. But uh, since those guys are never alone, you will, you will die very often in this game. Uh, also, you can't keep up with the progression at first, as you will find a better armor piece or a better gear piece or a weapon in every two minutes. Meaning that by the time you will have your second encounter after the death, uh, you might have leveled up as to the enemies, but your setup is obsolete, because you will still have your old gear, which is now underleveled. And since enemies level with you, enemies are stronger because their armor pieces are stronger and weapons as well. Fighting mechanism itself resembles Witcher 3, but is more tighter and feels like you have more control over, over where and why you hit. You also are attacked by mercenaries, who are sent upon you as you steal or pillage or kill, kill civilians. Even as little as running your horse over some guy's child gets you a spike in this bounty meter. All those red helmets mean that there's someone who's trying to kill you. They will find you in the worst possible time. You can luckily get uh, rid of this easily just by paying your debt or just killing the dude who hired them to kill you. Mercenary system kinda resembles somewhat the, the nemesis system in Shadow of War. Uh, with all of them having their own names and identities, this will give battles more depth. All of them can be killed and when they die they're permanently gone. One of my most loved features, ships! Yes, the ships and naval battles are back, thank you! You can now upgrade your own ship again in so many ways. You can hire and recruit uh, people to fight for you and explore the vast seas! And the sea is gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful to explore and experience, just magnificent. In this game there is also something called the cult, which is basically a fantastic feature, but it's unique only to Odyssey. It's not a feature, but it's kind of a game mode in this game overall. In this game you meet the, the secret underground Illuminati-like cult. You will need to find all the identities of its members. Everyone is connected to someone and the clues are all over the world. So you need to basically identify them all in this very exciting new thing, yes. You also battle in the war that is uh, brewing between uh, Spartans and the Athens. You burn supplies and uh, kill the key members of the opposition and then you will have weakened them enough so you can uh, enter a conquest, which is a huge battle between those factions. You basically kill a bunch of enemies uh, uh, there as fast as you can, hit the commander in the face 
and get mother load of XP. Many say that uh, this game is a grind and it gets old and the leveling gets old and it's hard work. Well, it really is a lot of hard work, I agree, but it's not as boring as everyone likes to debate upon. I mean, max level is 50. If you hit 50, it's, it kind of means that the game is over, to me at least. Game this size needs to be explored properly. At least, that's my opinion. But if someone feels that this is too much of a chore, then microtransactions come and help you out! <laughs> Which I will never recommend anyone to buy. Uh, keep this shit as an option you will never use, especially because none of this progression is carried over to next Ubisoft's releases. Basically, you buy $10 worth of a shortcut to end your game and your fun faster. What is the point of this? But this game isn't just rainbows and sunshine, it has downsides as well. First of all, you must press triangle if you want to pick something up or do something or assassinate someone, so you see where I'm going. If you want to pick up a treasure and uh, uh, an unlucky person uh, decides to uh, lie next to it, you will assassinate him or her. So you know, it's that's kind that kind of sucks because you gain bounty that way. If you accidentally assassinate someone or some dude sleeping next to the desired item. So I'm not saying that killing in this game is bad, but this action has been a catalyst to many ruined quests as I accidentally hit a Spartan while trying to kill a wolf next to him and then the whole military camp gets angry and attacks me. So you know, ugh. then the quest glitches and ugh. eh. So I have had some errors with the frame rate as well that the game basically freezes while the music keeps playing. I get like one frame in three seconds and try to escape the loading segment, but I get the still image for a few minutes after that. So it happened only twice, but still it's worth the mention. But anyways, in conclusion, if this is the new direction, Assassin's Creed is headed, and Origins and Odyssey are the games that pave the new way, I can honestly say that future for this franchise looks bright. I will give this game 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's going to be one of those ratings that has a point in the middle. So I think that's about it. There's much to be said, but I think I covered most of the game. I will now continue playing. I hope you liked this review, and if you did, hit that like, smash that bell, and if you dare, subscribe as well. I'm Silly Lamas, and thanks for watching. Till next time.